Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of Coming Distractions, brought to you by the Nerdpocalypse Podcast. I'm your host, Jay. I'm here with my co-host, Terrence. What's up? All right, guys, we're back. Um, this time we're going to review the new Eli Roth-directed film, I Death didn't, Wish. I didn't know he directed this. Yeah. Um, that's, that's strike one. Continue. <laughs> like, I would argue it's strike one and two, but we're already at two strikes. Um, so this movie is starring Bruce Willis, and I put starring uh, in quotes. Uh, the reason why is because to star in a movie, you have to be acting. Uh, Bruce Willis isn't acting. Bruce Willis sleeps wa- sleepwalks through um, 107 minutes, um, performing a feat that I've never seen in a film Wait. before. How many minutes? 107. That's how long it is? Yeah, it's too long. <laughs> it's too long. Um, so the <sighs> film the film obviously wow. takes the same name and the same general story as the original 1974 Charles Bronson movie. Um, so here, here's the thing. Somehow in the course of making this movie, Eli Roth took every choice that could make the movie more tone deaf and said, why don't we turn it up to 10? Mm. Um, in the wake of everything that's going on politically with gun violence and everything else in the country, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention that, right? Because um, this is coming out This is coming out on Friday. We're in the middle of a heated gun debate yeah, across the country. I feel like this should probably not come out at this they point, should have, be they you. Honestly, they should have held it. They yeah. really should have. Um, and I normally wouldn't say that about movies, but this movie is so incredibly tone deaf that... You can't help but when you watch this movie go, really? This is what we're doing now? (laughs) So, okay. So the general premise of this movie, before I get into my larger criticisms, is the film stars uh, Bruce Willis as um, this guy, um, Paul Paul Kersey, who's a doctor. In the original Charles Bronson film, he was an architect. Mm -hmm. (laughs) (laughs) I'm sorry. So he's a doctor. So that's why Mike Epps... Is, is also a doctor, movie. yeah. <laughs> As a doctor, yeah. As a doctor, yeah. Now, okay. in, fa- in fairness to Mike Epps, he, he is mm, he's only in it for like two seconds. Like, like what you saw in the trailer, like he's in like one other scene, and like that's it. Like he doesn't really do anything. <laughs> uh, no, he does not die. Um, <laughs> I know, as Mike, uh, as our producer off stage <laughs> w- was wondering. Um, so, Paul Kersey is. He's this upper crust guy, right? He's a doctor, right? So he's got money. Right. Um, and again, you know, he was an architect in the original. So still kind of an upper crust person. However, the original took place in New York. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> this one in 2018, with all the gun violence and issues of gun violence, they decided to make it in Chicago. Well, that's why they did the first one in New York, because New York was a fucking shithole. <laughs> right. It was. Somebody. However, I would argue politically Putting a movie about a rich white man as a vigilante killing people in Chicago, maybe a little, a little tone deaf in 2018. But I digress. We'll get there. Um, so he becomes a vigilante after basically uh, these three guys break into his house through a series of situations. Um, it, they they break into his house. They end up. Um, hurting his daughter pretty badly. Uh, she ends up in a coma and they end up killing his wife, right? It's all it's all same as the original. Mm-hmm. I, I think in the original, his daughter becomes catatonic, basically, but she's in a coma this time. Uh, his brother's played by Vincent D'Onofrio, uh, who plays Frank Kersey, um, who's also there, and he's kind of just distraught that all this is happening. Through uh, a situation, Paul decides like he's going to take the law into his own hands. I won't spoil that for you. Whatever the fuck that means. Um, and he just becomes this vigilante. And he's known. They, they do this thing where like they're trying to make it interesting by saying, okay, they've got a liberal radio host and they've got a conservative radio host. Is Sway the, the liberal radio host? Yeah, Sway is the liberal radio host. He's playing himself, right? And right. he's actually, he makes some pretty good points, right? Like every morning they're like, oh, they, they refer to Bruce Willis' character because they don't know who he is as the Grim Reaper. This, this dude who's showing up and killing people. Um, and Sway is like, oh, you know, are we okay with this? Like white dude just killing black folks? Like it's just kind of fucked up. And you're right, Sway. It's kind of fucked up. <laughs> And then they have Man Cow, who is a legitimate conservative. Yeah, that guy uh, is a legitimate conservative uh, radio host in Chicago. And he's the conservative voice. And he's like, this guy's a hero and all sorts of stuff. So they're trying to play like 
both sides of your consciousness. Uh, here's the problem with that. The scenes of him killing people is not... There, there is no, if you're going to play that like both sides, there is no like, oh, hmm, I wonder, is it okay? No, he's just murdering bad guys. So you're just like, yeah, I, I agree with the conservative policy. Like, obviously, this guy is a superhero. Like, that's totally <laughs> fine. So it's not on the line at all. Right. Um, again, Bruce Willis is super poor. And like, I don't think Bruce Willis wants to be there. I don't think he's wanted to be at anything since like Die Hard 3, <laughs> if, I, you know, if I'm being honest. Um... He's kind of sleepwalked through. His daughter is knocked out the entire movie for the most part. Uh, Dean Norris is in it, uh, who plays Detective Reigns. Who, um, oh, the guy from um, from Breaking Bad. From Breaking Bad, right? His brother-in-law from Breaking Bad. He's in it. He plays a cop. Shocker. Um, and he's he's pretty good. Um, look, I'm just gonna give away the ghost here. Uh, he murders a lot of people. He he eventually murders the people who who kill his wife. Wow, well, wow, well, you know, shocking news, right? Here's the part that really pissed me off. One, the action sequences are not that great um, because he's a guy who doesn't know how to shoot, right? So he just kind of like gets into it and then like he has like one moment at the end. You're like, oh, this guy's a badass or whatever. Okay. (laughs) The end is the fucking problem because at the end, you've got this white upper crust guy (laughs) being a vigilante. People are somehow okay with it, just taking the law into his own hands. But then Dean Norris's character, the cop, spoiler alert, he finds out, he realizes who Bruce Willis is, that he's this guy, right? He finds out, okay, he's the Grim Reaper. And then at the end, he's like, so, um, yeah, good job. I mean, he did have a Death Wish 2, correct? There were five Death Wish oh, yeah. movies. So you can't, you can't go to jail. Yeah. So he was just like, good job. <laughs> <laughs> See you later, buddy. <laughs> and so this all takes place in Chicago. <laughs> He then takes his daughter's da- daughter, eventually recovers. Again, I don't care about spoiling this movie. I, look, don't see this movie. It's terrible. <laughs> he takes his daughter to the New York for to go to college. And at the end of the movie, you know, he's supposed to, he's like, he's given up. His brother knows what he does. His, he's given up all of, um, he's given up being a, you know, this vigilante. And he sees this guy steal a bag. And he goes, Hey! And the guy stops and turns around and that scene from the fucking poster where he like points his finger like it's a gun and it's like, dun, 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 death wish. And it's like, okay, so there's going to be more of these terrible ass movies. I'm sorry. What did you just say? Yeah. So he's just like, hey, man, like I see you, like I'll shoot you. So now I guess he's because I think he moves to New York. So now he's just going to kill criminals in New York. Again. So the people that murdered his wife, were they black or white? They were uh, Latino yeah. So you want to know why we have an issue with guns in this country? This movie's the reason because it fetishizes the idea of just like the good guy with the gun argument. That's right. Because when you like it legitimately <laughs> does. Like when you said that they had the two, like they had the the liberal and the conservative. Like okay, the liberal is like, is this all right? Are we really allowing this to happen? And the conservative is like, yeah, he's a hero. Like they're still showing this thing to kill a bunch of people. Right. So That's what I'm saying. Like it's not. To, what it, are we supposed to think? This is not. It's not, it's, they're, they're trying to like play this edge of like, it's 50 50. Like, you'll come out 50 50. No, you won't. He murders this one guy in a fucking garage, and you're like, yeah, it seems about right. <laughs> like, I, I think they, they show that he drops a car on him, right? Yeah. And it's Eli yeah, Roth, so it's like super bloody, yeah, he's it's like super gory. Man. Yeah. So, like, the, okay. the, <laughs> like, that's ridiculous. But the action sequences, the funny thing is, the action sequences really weren't that great. There's a couple of like, because it's Eli Roth again. There are a couple of like sort of torture sequences where you're just like, yeah, I saw this coming a mile away. But overall, it's not good. Uh, a buddy of mine who went and saw it with me, he said, oh, it's a one and a half out of five. And I said, wow, that's way higher than I would give it. It's a half a star. God damn. It is a complete and utter waste of your time. If you really like the Death Wish movies, go watch them again. Just go watch those. Charles Bronson has more charisma. Um, Does he? Yeah. <laughs> And that's the thing. He doesn't. That doesn't even compute. I'm just saying. he just walked around like a zombie. Yo, there is a moment in this movie where someone is like, Elizabeth Shue, who plays Bruce Willis' wife, she's like, "Um, are you happy? And Bruce Willis, with a deadpan face, not ironically say, he's like, no, I'm extremely happy. I'm really happy right now. But he's not saying it as a joke. He's supposed to be really happy. And he's like, 
like his face doesn't like really move anymore. He's like, uh, uh. I was like, yo, why am I watching this movie? <laughs> Half a star, terrible. Do not waste your time. Do not, do not bother. Absolute waste of time. If there's a Death Wish two, you won't hear me talk about it. Glad I didn't go see this bullshit. Yeah, no, no. I, trust me, you lucked up. Yeah, I try, I try, I try to get you, you, you to go. Tickets off on my ass. I'm like, no, nah, fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't want these. I don't know. You know what? You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> I took the hit. So, Death Wish. There you go. Uh, make sure you check out. Um, if you're listening to this in the Coming Distractions podcast feed, make sure you check out the videos for this on youtube.com slash the nerdpocalypse. And if you're watching the video, make sure you subscribe to the audio version as well. Again, Coming Distractions is uh, available on any podcatcher that you uh, use. Uh, check those out. And also leave five-star reviews on iTunes. They uh, really help. And we will see you guys next time. Thank you. Bye. You're watching the Nerdpocalypse YouTube channel. Make sure you click that button to subscribe and check out our weekly podcast where we talk about movie, TV, news, tech, and weird stories from around the internet.